Jim Green. I'm a gunsmith. I have a shop in Harrington, Maine, down east Gunworks. Today's rifle we're going to disassemble and talk about is a martini made in Nepal by <coughs> Gehendra. These Gehendra martinis are a pretty rare variation of the old British martini rifles. These guns were made in the 1880s and they're in the standard British caliber of 45577. So let's take this one to the bench. These Gehendra Martinis were developed and uh, built in the 1880s, and they were supposed to be a copy of the British Martini rifles. Actually, the internal mechanism of the Gehendra is considerably different, and a lot of people actually think that they're probably a little bit better of a design. <clears throat> this rifle here was imported by IMA, International Military Antiques, and so this one came through the Sportsman's Guide for uh, about $189. The customer who brought this in, the rifle was rusted shut and jammed. Wasn't exactly sure originally why it was jammed, so first thing I did is I put a, a, a cleaning rod down the length of the board to touch the breech space, make sure it wasn't loaded. Can't ever tell if one of these guns is loaded and, and corroded shut or not, but this one wasn't. So to start with, we're going to remove the wood the, and the <clears throat> front barrel bands. So get our punch and screwdrivers. Coming up here to the front, we'll take the uh, front barrel band, we'll loosen it up just a little bit. This gun's in pretty rough shape. These were stored long-term storage. These guns were turned, there we go, get the cleaning rod out of the way. These guns, were put, these guns were put in long-term storage in a castle in Kathmandu in Nepal. Probably not stored under the most ideal conditions. We'll flip the gun over and you'll see there's a little cross pin inside here that you need to remove first. Okay. Well, in this case, the, <laughs> the sling screw just popped right out. It didn't strip, but that's the condition the gun's in. Gonna be a lot of dirt, a lot of trash in this thing. We'll remove this second little cross pin right here. <clears throat> as, I, as I'd said before, if you're a little confused as to how this thing goes back together, lay your parts out in order as you take them off, take them off the gun. You shouldn't have any problems. I always like to take one of these little plastic mallets to knock this stuff loose. That way you don't ding the wood up any worse than you have to. Alright. There's going to be one more little cross pin back here. This is actually what holds the stock in place. Set that off to the side too. <clears throat> now to get the front hand uh, the front hand guard and forestock off. Just kind of pull up a little bit and then take a little bit of wiggling. And you can see how old this gun is. From the 1880s, it's pretty cruddy. All right. <clears throat> Next thing you'll want to do is remove the screw back here and the one on the underside. Remove your rear stock. A little short screw goes in the bottom, and this long screw goes all the way through the top tang and into the bottom tang to hold the stock in place. Sometimes uh, you'll need to clean some of the crud out of the screw slots, so your screwdriver will fit in there a little better. A lot of rust. Now these these stocks are a little wider on the inside, making them difficult to remove. So what I'd like to do next is go up here, and these two these two little screws here are what's going to hold your trigger uh, trigger guard and trigger assembly in place. So we'll loosen those up next, just enough to get the stock out the back of the gun.
sometimes these things are a little tough to get them apart. Let's push that in from the back side. Yeah, those pivot pins are, both of these pivot pins are threaded on the back to screw into the receiver on the opposite side. So we'll pull that down just a little bit. There we go. You can notice this is going to be a candidate for stock repair because it looks like it's cracked sometime in the past and somebody's driven a nail in through the top. That's a temporary stock repair, but we'll fix that later. Now you have your stripped barrel, or you have your barreled action ready to take apart. Since you've already got these two screws right here out, you can go ahead and pull this down and remove it. And you'll notice on the hammer here, it's got a couple little hooks or on the, the hammer spring. Those will fit on a little stirrup inside the hammer, and I'll show you that. We'll come over here, we'll remove this bottom screw at the bottom of the trigger guard. And then remove your hammer spring. The sling swivel goes in front of the trigger. We'll remove this. On these old guns, sometimes this is easier said than done. A little trick that I use sometimes when I've got one of these old guns that's being stubborn, you've heard of a torque wrench. <laughs> well, I've got what's called a smoke wrench. Take a small little uh, propane or mat gas torch and very gently heat up around the outside of the screw. Not enough to heat the metal up and turn it red or discolor it, but just enough to break some of the crud loose. When you, have that, when you have that heated up, you can probably dribble a little bit of penetrating oil into it and get everything loosened up a little bit better. Another trick you can use is just take the barrel action, get you an old uh, jug of some kind of port with some kerosene and just soak the whole thing for a couple of days. Anyway, once that's done, the next part you can take off, you can remove the trigger return spring by removing that screw. trigger return spring. We'll set that off to the side. Then you can take this screw out here and remove the trigger. We'll set that off to the side too. Last little part you may or may not want to remove. I mean, depending on how well you want to clean the gunk out of it. This little uh, <clears throat> catch right here for retaining the lever. Just take that screw right there out. And set that off to the side. So there's your, uh, there's your trigger disassembled and the lower tang. Next, next thing you'll want to remove from the gun, there'll be a little front screw right up here that's the pivot point for the lever. Now once you have this out, the lever that opens and closes the action will come out. Set that off to the side. <clears throat> you take a pair of pliers or something to reach inside and you grab the hammer and the ejector all in one piece. Well, this is going to be a little stubborn. Keep in mind how old this gun is actually. It's a pretty, pretty ancient piece. So, all right, let's get the hammer and the built-in firing pin. We'll pull that out. Let's see if we can get this. There we go. And here's your ejector. Last piece that will come out of the gun is going to be the block itself. This be the last screw right here. Just pull 
out the bottom. And there's your Gehendra Martini completely stripped <clears throat> for a good cleaning. Basically, like I said earlier, these are these are probably a little bit more of a rare variant of the Martini rifles, and uh, a lot of a lot of people think they're over engineered. They're a little bit in, internally different than a uh, British Martini. They fire the same cartridge, 455, 77. Um, the Nepalese had a problem with them as far as uh, making enough of them to equip their army with. So in 1894, the British ended up shipping, shipping uh, several thousand British Martinis, and these rifles were basically shelved and put in storage and not used anymore. And that's the reason they're probably coming in in pretty cruddy condition because they've been stored in, in the basement of an old castle in a third world country and not in very ideal conditions. Here's your whole rifle tape disassembled and ready to be cleaned. Thank you for watching this latest Gunworks video. Down East Gunworks is a full service farm repair service for all of your long guns and handguns that includes a high tech machine shop for tooling obsolete parts. Old or new, if you have a farm that needs attention, Gunworks can probably fix it, solve it, coat it, and make it work. If you're living in Down East Maine, come by the shop for a visit. We're located on Route 1 in Harrington. If you live elsewhere, you can reach us by going to the website www.downeastgunworks.com or call in the shop at area code 207-483-2175. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please leave me a comment and rate the video. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll always know when I've posted something new. And thanks again for watching.